So my car started making this terrible noise coming from the engine. And anytime I revved past 2000 RPM, I would get this blinking oil light with a audible sound. And when I went below, it'd go off and back above, it'd go back on. And when it said on the dash here to stop, because I had low oil pressure. I checked the oil and it was full. So I decided to do some research. People said it was the pickup tube. So I came in a little late on this video. Let me just explain what I had done. I didn't drop the pan on this. I actually decided to do something a bit unorthodox. I had jacked the car up, put it on a couple stands. I drained the oil and I cut open the bottom of the oil pan to gain access to this pickup oil tube. But I decided just to do this rectangle to gain access to this oil pickup. How I did that was with a four inch grinder and I cut my marks there, not too deep, so that I didn't hit anything or damage anything. And the corners, because the grinder could not get all the way back there, before the plate would come out, I just used a metal sawzall blade, and by hand, I just cut out all four corners, and the uh, plate just fell right out. So, the good news after doing this was the oil pickup tube was the issue. You can see here how clogged it is. Uh, the oil is just barely dripping out. So that was the issue that the car was having. Basically, with this design, you have to jack the motor up and then drop this frame here to gain access to three bolts. And I just didn't have the equipment. So I decided to do something unorthodox. Follow along. The tools I used for this was a four inch grinder, a drill driver, set of allen wrenches, I used a 5.5 millimeter, a pair of needle nose vice grips, a Phillips head screwdriver, a two pound sledge, a socket extension with a number six socket, a number 19 open end box wrench, a number 10 open end box wrench, a wire brush, a tape measure, a permanent marker, metal cutting sawzall blade, a small flathead screwdriver, a pick would work as well, a 1032 drill and tap set, 12 10 32 by 3 8 machine screws stainless steel 12 number 8 bonded sealing washers galvanized a 60 grit sanding block a piece of sheet metal i got a 12 by 12 inch type 28 galvanized they come in different finishes i just chose galvanized brake part cleaner ultra black gasket maker gasoline a bucket can also use a tupperware or some kind of small bowl a couple shop towels fully synthetic motor oil for european cars a standard oil pan and of course a jack set. So this oil pickup line uh, is attached with two bolts here. The bolt on the left I was able to take out with just the number 10 box wrench and I got my fingers up there to remove that. The second bolt here was a lot more difficult for me to get in. I actually could not use a open end box wrench. I had to modify an Allen wrench. So what I did is I took a 5.5 mil Allen wrench and I cut the front so I had just enough to get it in the hole and the bottom so that it was short enough to get into the oil pan area. I used a pair of vice grips so that I could put this Allen wrench in place to break the bolt loose. Here I use my vice grips and I get my Allen right in place. And then I came in with my extension number six socket and my sledgehammer and I just tapped that Allen over to break the bond with the nut. It was actually quite simple. Once I removed that, then I could go on my number 10 wrench and it was a lot easier to get out. The sides that were cut with the grinder were actually very smooth. They weren't sharp. I didn't have to worry about cutting my fingers or anything. This may not be the case for anyone trying to do this, but in my case, the cuts were very smooth. So this kind of looks like open heart surgery with all this oil dripping out. Eventually I was able to persuade the bolt to come loose and take out this assembly here. Now you can see this is a screen here that will actually stop debris from coming back up to the engine, which is good, but it got all clogged up with just whatever was in the block. 
What I did here was take some gasoline in a bowl and I just swirled the pickup tube uh, with the screen to try to get as much of this out. And then I took a wire brush and just brushed the screen on the top. And it actually came out pretty clean, but uh, on closer inspection, it had all this debris on the inside right here. I wanted to make sure I got that out, so I took a small flathead screwdriver and just went around the inside of this, try to get all this gross stuff out of here. Now it looks like some of this is plastic from a guide, because I know the guide is brown on top where the, the cam chain is, so a little bit was that. Other stuff was a lot of like dirt and whatever got into the engine. This was doing its job, but uh, it got clogged up and needed to be cleaned out. After I got all that debris out as much as I could with the screwdriver, I came back with some more gasoline and just shook this up really good. And gasoline does really good at uh, breaking all this up. I got it cleaned up pretty good. I didn't see a need to buy a new one, so I just decided to use this original one. Before I reinstalled this pickup, I wanted to clean any impurities or piece of metal that may have gotten in there from the grinder and any dirt that may be sitting there. Uh, so I used a shop towel and just did my best to get out what I could. Before I put the tube back in, I'll put my O-ring on and then go ahead and slide this into place. This thing sits extremely low to the bottom of the oil pan. That's why it gets so clogged. If there's any debris or dirt, it just gets so clogged up. This is not a great design. And honestly, I think these pans should come with an axis on the bottom. So you can see when it's in place, it sits maybe a quarter inch off the bottom. Also, um, just to show that when I was grinding that it was really close. So these bolts weren't extremely difficult to get in, but they took a while. Once I got them started with my fingers, I could just go with the box wrench and tighten them down. I did not need to use the Allen wrench that I modified to tighten this bolt down. Number 10 did it just fine. I'm going to fill around the inside of this pan and basically get a measurement how far I can set screws to drill and tap new holes to put this plate on. I measured the most shallow part of the pan and got an average around half an inch. So I'll do a half inch around. Now I use the bottom plate of the pan that I cut as a template and I use a permanent marker to mark around that and then use my tape measure to come around and get that half inch on all sides. I use this for a straight edge and just mark this out so I know not to cut it. And come with my four inch grinder again and just cut on these lines. This plate is pretty rough, so I want to clean it up on the edges. I'm not just going to clean it. I'm also going to rough up. I'm going to scuff a few inches in. This is so that the gasket maker can adhere properly to the surface. If this was just a clean, flat surface, the gasket maker would have a more difficult time adhering to this piece of metal. So I'm gonna scuff this up all around where the bolts will sit and clean up the outsides and make it nice and smooth so I can work on it. After I scuff it up with my grinder, I'll come back with the 60 grit sanding pad and just give it a once over. I marked by hand where the bolts will be going in on this plate. I did one on each corner and then two in between each one. After I marked the holes, I went to my drill and tap set, took out my drill bit and got to work with my drill driver. This bit will grab onto this and make the plate come up. You can see here, it's actually 
really strong, so uh, I had to try my best to keep control of the uh, drill driver while doing this. After I got my holes all drilled out, I went ahead with my grinder and gave this another once over. Scuff this up on both sides now, just because. And I'll use my plate just one last time to take a quick look and everything looks good. Now I'll take the plate and I'll align it right about where I think it should go. And I'll mark the holes with my ProNet marker. And when I take this plate down, I'll be able to see if the holes are in a good place or not. If they weren't, I would go ahead and try this again. I'll come back around again with my permanent marker to make sure that I see where the holes go. And take my drill driver with my drill bit. So I just went around and did all the holes with this drill bit. And again, this drill bit tries to just go right into uh, the pan here. So I had to try to keep control of this as much as possible. Some of these came out really crooked, but it wasn't an issue. After I got in my holes drilled, I uh, took my tap, put it in my drill, and I put the drill on the lowest setting. This is because the tap doesn't need to be really fast to do its job. Also, I have better control over the drill this way. When I do this tapping, I'm just going to let the tap do the job. I don't really put any pressure on. And anytime I felt a little bit of resistance, I would stop and ease back the drill, let some of the metal shards come out, and then go back and tap the rest. The tap doesn't need to go all the way in to tap the hole. About halfway is fine. After I tapped my first hole, I went ahead and used my machine screw to make sure it all matched up fine. And that was a tight fit, so I was feeling pretty confident about this. So I went ahead and tapped all the holes. Again, some of these holes were pretty crooked for my drillings, but uh, it wasn't an issue. And I wanted to make sure that all these holes were good to go, so I went ahead and did a once around with a screw. I took my 60 grit sanding block and I went ahead and cleaned up, I scuffed this whole area because I want that gasket maker to adhere to both the plate and the pan. After I got that scuffed up and clean, I hit it with some brake part cleaner. I just want to show what this is going to look like. The bolt's going to go up a little higher into the pan, but not very high. This is why I use this particular setup. Now, I follow the manufacturer's uh, instructions for this. I actually had never used Gasket Maker before this. It says on there what size B to use. All I knew for sure is I had to go around these holes for proper seal. I really just went kind of wild on this. I just put a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff on this because I wanted it to hold. And again, I never used it before, so I didn't know how well it was going to work. So that's ready to be drilled in. I started a screw first because I wanted to make sure I could get the plate in place. And if I had tried to start the screw afterwards, it would have been a pain in the neck. So I started one screw, got the plate up, and then I continued on. Because I drilled these crooked, I wasn't able to get the bolts in every one. So I just started going to the ones I could get. I just kept continuing moving forward. And eventually I found the sweet spot for each one. Now the manufacturer's direction says to uh, hand tighten these, to wait an hour and then come back and tighten these up. I just used my screwdriver and I was able to get pretty good torque on there. I waited 24 hours for this gasket maker to set up and then I went ahead and added oil specified for the vehicle. Check my dipstick, take it out, clean it off first, give it another dip, check it out, and the oil is full. The moment of truth was to start the car, let the car run for about 20 minutes for it to warm up and I saw no leaks at all. This worked perfect. And I actually been driving the car around for about four months now. I took a trip that was about 400 miles back and forth in Florida, so no issues with this. It took me about an hour to do, and uh, yeah. I hope you found this video helpful. 
Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.